My name is Joe Iwanaga. I'm an oral surgeon and anatomist from Japan. Um, I'm actually working here for almost four years. Um, you know, since I am an oral surgeon or a maxillofacial surgeon, dentist, I am very interested in trigeminal nerve, which is a fifth cranial nerves. So, you know, this is almost a lunch time and you can chat and eat. Just, you know, just a little bit listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, you know, the fo focus on this topic is, uh, you know, especially trigeminal nerve, but I also men will mention something what I talked in the lab, like uh, contraceptive implant. Um, have you ever heard about the contraceptive implant or a contraception? Yeah, this is a you know procedure for you know female and not for male, but uh, you know many of the female people you know do not want to have a baby when they work. You know, maybe in three years I want to have a baby, or maybe in five years I want to have a baby, but not now. You know, for those people, you know, we have a lots of different options, like you know medications or surgical procedures, and the one option which we have researched, we have studied, is this uh, contraceptive implant, which is nothing to do with the oral cavity. Yeah. Uh, and so this is uh, you know, one of the big company you know, asked us to do this study, because uh, there are lots of uh, you know, complication, not, probably not lots of, we don't say lots of, but some complication reported, which, has, which, have, uh, which is a life-threatening complication. So this contraceptive implant was something like uh, you know small, probably three to four centimeters length, and five millimeter in diameter. This small drug was inserted into the you know forearm, the sorry the arm, you know this arm. Did you see the ulnar nerve in the lab? Ulnar nerves, right? So ulnar nerve is located running close to this medial epicondyle. This is a funny bone, right? So this uh, contraceptive implant is inserted close by this medial epicondyle, just uh, eight to 10 centimeter, you know, posterior to the, this medial epicondyle, and probably two to three centimeter back of this area. This is a window. This is a site for this contraceptive implant. So if you place this uh, contraceptive implant to this site, we could damage this, oh, it's hard to see, but this bluish structure is a big vein, and the yellow one is an older nerve. So if you place the implant in this area, these structures can be damaged. That, that's our findings. So we suggested another option, another window for safer surgery. That's what we did as an anatomy study. So first window which was recommended was this area, and this second window is uh, our recommendation, which is much safer. So now uh, that company is uh, applying the, you know, the changing the guideline, and probably um, uh, FDA will change the guideline soon. Um, which is very uh, interesting study, but you know I would say you know this implant surgery implant procedure is very safe and very useful, very beneficial. So we don't say this is very dangerous. You know, we have very few complications, but you know, which is uh, if you have if you are a patient, if you have a complication, that's huge. So we should make it better, right? Okay, so um, let's go to the oral cavity. Um, this is, uh, have you ever had a wisdom tooth surgery before? All right, probably half of you had a wisdom tooth surgery, right? Um, if dentist, if your doctor do this uh, wisdom tooth surgery, we usually use uh, this uh, dental nerve block. Dental nerve block is a, uh, you know, block for make it numb. You know, if your you know, gum is still active, it's not numb, you feel pain. So we have to make it numb before surgery. So this is a very common procedure to block the uh, 
the name of the nerve is not dental nerve, but we, we have a you know, specific term for this nerve, but uh, let me tell you later. And probably yesterday, some of you were you know, talking with me about the uh, facial nerve and probably some of the trigeminal nerve, trigeminal nerve. So probably you know the facial nerve innervates the facial muscles, right? If you damage a facial nerve, you cannot move the facial muscles. But still you can feel the pain or temperature or compression if you still have a trigeminal nerve. So this illustration shows the uh, dermatomes of the trigeminal nerve. So you see the V1 from the top. V1, V2, V3. V means the fifth tri the trigeminal nerve. Number five means the V. All right? so, Trigeminal nerve has uh, three big divisions. The first one is ophthalmic, which is going to the, around the eye and forehead. And the V2, maxillary nerve, maxillary division is a uh, middle face. V3, um, mandibular division is innervating the uh, lower face and little, you know, lateral face. So if you, you know, for example, if you damage the V3, you cannot feel your chin or temporal region, okay? So um, picture is more you know, easy to understand. So these are all branch of the mandibular nerve, which is a B3, all right? This is the main trunk of the B3. We have lots and lots of you know, branches. This is, these two are biggest branches of the B3. This is inferior alveolar nerve, which innervates all the mandibular teeth. So if you block this nerve, we can do the rhythm to surgery. This is another big nerve. This is called lingual nerve, which is going to the tongue. So this you know, controls the sensation of the tongue. You, know, you can feel the pain of the tongue because you have this nerve. You can feel the temperature of the coffee, which you are drinking now. Some of you are drinking now because of this nerve, okay? And compression. You can feel something if you have sweets or food in your mouth, you can feel the compression to the tongue. This is because we have a lingual nerve. These are very important nerves. And can you see this little guy from the back? This is the front, this is the back. So this little guy is for the taste sensation. So you know, when you eat snacks, when you eat ice cream, you can taste, right? This is because this little guy. But this little guy is not from the trigeminal nerve. This is interesting. This is from facial nerve, which should innervate the facial muscles. But this is another branch of the facial nerve, right? So if you damage this nerve, if you cut by happen, by happen it, it's impossible, but you know, if you cut this nerve, you cannot taste ice cream anymore. That's terrible. So we have to make sure that this nerve is located back of the lingual nerve. Where does this nerve running run? You know, we have to know the anatomy to do a safer surgery. And the other things is, Do you have any idea where this picture showing? Which part of the body? Say again. Close. Close. Some, somewhere in the head and neck. Say again. Close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, did you say ear nose or nose? This is an actual ear. This is a middle ear. You know, if you look at the ear, you can see the, the eardrum. We, we call it impact membrane. You know, if you use a, something microscope or camera, we can see the eardrum. And when you take the eardrum off, you can see these structures inside the middle ear, okay? So this yellow one is a nerve, which I cut 
in the cadaver. These two structures are small, small, small bones inside the middle, which is called malleus and incus. We have another small one, which is called stapes. We have three different, you know, small osculs, ear osculs. If you want, I can show you later in the lab. This is very small. The smallest one is like uh, two millimeters, the size. So between these two small bones, some nerves is running. This is actually the nerve for taste. Same nerve, which I showed last in the last slides. This one. This is uh, almost close to the oral cavity, but before you know, it comes to the oral cavity, that nerve is running inside the middle ear. Something strange, but yes, all of you have this nerve inside the middle ear. So if you have uh, something infection to the middle ear, this nerve can be affected. Especially, you know, not for adult, but especially for the little baby, you know, one year old, half month old, half year old. Those baby has a very short ear canal. So those baby can be affected very easily. Yep. So if that nerve is damaged, like in a child, can it cause deafness? Yeah, so, you know, if you have some damage or, you know, infection to this nerve, the taste sensation can be damaged, can be affected. Yeah, so that's a huge. But you know, I haven't heard about you know permanent infection, permanent damage for this nerve. Yeah, good question. And the other one is this is left chin. This is left chin. So as I showed you the nerve, which is called inferior alveolar nerve, is running inside the mandible, the lower jaw. And this, uh, actually, this is the mandible, the lower jaw. And so this nerve you know, was into the mandible, lower jaw, and gives many branches to the older teeth of the, the mandible, lower jaw. And then, eventually, this nerve goes out from the mandible, lower jaw, and gives so many branches to the lower lip and chin, and some of the you know, corner of the mouth. So if you damage that nerves, this nerve, your chin is going to be numb. So I think uh, you, if you go to medical school, you need to learn everything. But at this point, you don't have to learn. But if you learn these two nerves, that's very you know, interesting. You know? to know. This is another overview of the nerves. It's the same one. If you have your nerve to the you know, lower jaw, this is a lingual nerve to the tongue. And this is another nerve from the facial nerve for the taste. OK? This is easier to remember. Um, this is if you have your nerve to the lower jaw, it's cut. This is a lingual nerve and taste. This is called the cauda tympani, which is a Latin, so it's hard to remember. But this is a lingual nerve. But all of these are the same trunk. All of these are from a trigeminal nerve, third division, B3 of the trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve is a fifth cranial nerve. Do you remember how many nerves do we have as a cranial nerve? 12, yeah, 12 paired cranial nerves we have, okay? So this is a number five. We have a right side and left side, okay? So let's go to the, some muscles. Now some of you are now chewing or biting food or snacks, right? We need to have uh, muscles to chew or bite. So. Can you feel your cheek when you bite something? Chew, chew, chew. And you can feel the movement of the muscle, right? This is one of the muscle. Oh, sorry, this, this doesn't show that muscle. This is called the uh, masseter muscles. We have uh, four different chewing muscles. And this is one of, one of it. And then 
if you feel the lateral face, this area, you can feel when you chew, you can feel the movement. This is another muscle, temporalis muscle. And inside our cavity, we have another two. This one, lateral and medial table muscle, but this is too much you know, deeper, so you cannot feel. But it, you know, obviously, we can feel temporalis muscle and masseter muscles outside the face. And the other thing which we can feel by your finger or thumb is when you trace the lower jaw, you can feel the angle of the lower jaw. And the little anterior to the angle of the jaw, you can feel the pulse. This is a facial artery, which supplies the, the blood to the face. So if you feel something pulse here, oh, this is a facial artery, I'm, I'm still alive. <laughs> Right? <laughs> All right, so that's you know, basic things which we can palpate or we can feel from outside the face, okay? Okay, so this is a little, little complicated, but uh, let me show you something as a professional. <laughs> so this yellow part is uh, the innervation area of the inferior vial nerve and lingual nerve, so if you do, or if your dentist do a nerve block for wisdom tooth extraction, wisdom tooth removal, you feel numb around this area. You feel numb. So if you have a block procedure, your tongue will be numb, your teeth on the one side will be numb, and also your lip will be numb. But only this area is not going to be numb because uh, this is uh, another nerve, which is called the buccal nerve. So we need to add another block for buccal nerve. So this is a little complicated, so we need to add some. But, you know, as a patient experience, you know, my experience as a patient, um, almost a year ago, I went to my dentist to have some treatment, and I had a, that nerve block in my mouth. Not by myself, but my dentist do that, did that. And then, you know, I am an anatomist, and I am an oral surgeon. I, I, I was so curious to check my, you know, area of the numbness. And I felt every, every you know, anywhere, you know, that should be numb. So I felt here, and I didn't feel anything. That was good, you know? This no glove was okay. And I touched my tongue, and I didn't feel anything. That was good. And I, I touched my tooth, teeth, all the teeth, and that was numb. That was good. And the other thing is, this is probably most of the dentists do not focus on. So this shows. I showed you, I, you know, I told you this lingual nerve and inferior nerve, you know, which is well known as a target of the this nerve block. But this nerve is also in a branch of the trigeminal nerve. This is called auricular temporal which is going to the temporal region, this lateral phase. You know, if you block this nerve, this is also very you know, next to a navel, so this can be now. So if you, you know, make this numb, you don't feel anything in this area. Skin sensation. So, and also this nerve in the base, uh, some parts of the ear canal. So I checked my uh, ear canal after block. I didn't feel anything in the ear canal and this area. So that nerve block was perfect for me. So I was you know, relieved, and you know, I let Dennis do all the procedures after that. <laughs> but as a patient, you know, you know, if you go to the dentist, um, if you have a block, you block, the same block, if you feel anything in the ear, probably you will feel something strange. Because that's a dentist. Why my ear is numb after block? You will think about that. But if you know this anatomy, 
you don't worry about that. So that's why we need to know the anatomy to explain the patient. So in the dentistry, you know, doctor, you know, dentist, do not sit on the chair for a long time, but dental hygienist was there. You know, if patient asks dental hygienist, what's going on? Dental hygienist also should know that, but if the dental hygienist does not know that, they will ask dentist or doctor. And doctor or dentist have to know the anatomy to explain. <laughs> 